now we are heading to the meteor crater. Uh, originally, I was going to take Kuma with me here. Um, not that she can go inside, but they do have a dog outside kennel area, or you, they could watch your dog for you if you have your own crate. But since um, that was the plan for yesterday when we were going to Petrified Na Petrify Forest National Park, uh, if we were going to do that on the way back, so we were just going to have Kuma stay there. But since, you know, we're just leaving from Flagstaff to the Meteor Crater now, uh, it's approximately 40 minutes. Actually, what, 30 minutes? I think 35 minutes. 35 minutes. So it's about 35 minutes to drive from Flagstaff to the Meteor Crater site. And all you do is really go on I-40 straight and then you'll see an exit sign that says meteor crater it's a super easy drive but i was very interested in this place because it this meteor hit this site 50,000 years ago and it's this huge hole that's a mile wide that you can check out you could uh, view it from inside or outside obviously i want to go outside to look at it um, i've never actually seen a meteor uh, crater site like this i know there are some places that have this but I, this is my first time ever seeing one. How about yeah, you? Yeah, I've never been to one either. This yeah. is my first one. I mean, I just think it's so crazy, you know, that something from space came to Earth and created that huge hole. There's also a museum inside, too, where you can learn a little bit more about space and um, the meteor, I'm sure. So, yeah, um, we'll go see what it's all about. the meteor crater building <laughs> we keep seeing signs like of like two two miles to impact five miles to impact or like it's like it's like a countdown <laughs> yeah. I think that's cute yeah it's really cute that they did that but yeah again like you get off i-40 and then you go on the straight road straight highway in half a mile prepare to park your car you will need to walk to your destination from there i like how it tells us that we need to park and then walk to the destination <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty big site yeah, it is. It's a big building. I didn't think we'd be going uphill a little bit, which we're doing right now. It's like um, a little bit of an incline. Yeah, there it is. Prepare for impact. But now we're here because there's no more like uh, numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Experience the impact. And no drones permitted. There's actually quite a lot of cars here. Yeah, and there's cars behind us as well. Hmm. Pretty popular, but there's plenty of parking. Prepare yeah, yeah. to park your car. You will need to walk to your destination from there. We got it. So that's the building there. But look at the view out there. It looks really nice. Like it's so flat around here that you could see miles and miles out. Yeah, so they have this corner in here for pets. If you're traveling with pets, you could leave them in this nice little area here called Pet Ramada. Oh, oh they they're have individual, their own individual cages. cages. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, if you have, oh, there are dogs in oh, here. Hi. Hi. Oh, they're so cute. That's nice that they provide that, but I'm not sure Kuma would have enjoyed that. She would have definitely felt like I abandoned her in there. I think Captain or Zoe would be cap, like, well, probably Captain would bark the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> He's so loud. But it is nice that they it provide is. that, and I really yeah. do appreciate that they do this. Hi. Did you say scanning the tickets is here? Yeah. Or? Come around. No? Okay. So go ahead and scan your ticket okay. here. Okay. All right, so this is for you. I bought tickets online because you save $2. <laughs> it's actually $22 for adults, um, but if you buy it online in advance, it's $20. Okay, so we just go upstairs. Okay. Okay. I feel like I'm at Disney World. I know. <laughs> what? 
Hi. Hi. It's like kind of like mission space at Epcot. I feel like I'm going on that ride. Yeah. They only have 12 seats available for each showing. And then they have three motionless seats. Yeah. I guess for people who can't handle a little bit of motion. Mm -hmm. So we made it on the second round, second line, second group, we'll yeah, say, second group. to go see it with the motion seats. Because I want to see, see it with the motion. There we go. Oh, wow. This is Whoa. huge. I wasn't expecting it to be this big. I feel like I'm in a real space center. Two, one. So we just got out of the 4D uh, ride with where we're going to space. Yeah. Started from the crater and then I went up to space, destroyed some planets and uh, asteroids. <laughs> Actually, I think we just destroyed asteroids, not planets. Yeah, into little pieces. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, it was quite fun. You know, I think it's really fun for kids too because as you're like 4D basically means as you're watching the screen, your seat moves too. And, and then. There's air like pressure, the compression, like air. Yeah, you're like, shoots out. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, cool. <laughs> Lots of like, maybe like lights, like. There's some strobe lights. Strobe lights, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, it was it was entertaining. So once you exit um, that theater, you come back out. There's like restrooms, and then now we're here where the spaceship is. So I'm gonna find out what this is. There's actually a nice view over here too. This test capsule named Boilerplate 29A never flew into space. Instead, the capsule was built in 1965 to test the systems that helped Apollo space capsules flow upright after splash down at sea. Huh. So it's like a testing capsule. Oh, here's a map actually. So yeah. So we parked, went to ticket entry. We're here right now. We just did the tour over here. Yeah, we did the theater. And now we're gonna go check out the actual museum. We're gonna do the Discovery Center. Yeah. There you go. Right there. Discovery Center. Thank you. The whole thing or meteorite is the largest discovered fragment of the 150 foot meteor that created Meteor Crater. It's traveling roughly at 40,000 miles an hour. 11 miles per second. I guess this is where you can see it from the inside if you don't want to go outside. Now we're gonna go to the crater. Here we go. Here we go. Looks like we gotta go up some more steps. These are the lower observation decks. And they have upper ones up here. Right. Yeah. tiring. It's a little tiring. <laughs> I mean, I did say the air is thinner up here. Yeah. I mean, I do find it a little bit harder to breathe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to see those people down there now. Nah. <laughs> this is the crater from above. So we were just up at the tallest point where you can observe the meteor crater. Yeah. And we're, now we're going to go down a little bit to the lower just to see what the difference is. Looks like they got some telescopes or something down there. Binoculars. But yeah, actually going up these stairs, we were we kind were of struggling. Out, of, out of breath. <laughs> and a lot of people were, it wasn't just us, but I believe it's because you're going up into thinner air, so it's harder to catch your breath. Because that happened to me in um, uh, Colorado when I went up to uh, like 10,000 feet. Yeah. And I was taking short breaths. And right now it's um, it's 55 degrees, 
so it's like it's a little cold but in the sun it feels fine it feels nice in the sun yeah. but it is a little chilly without the sun yeah it feels good right here because of the sun <laughs> <laughs> looks like it feels good it looks like there's another observation deck down there yeah too. this one goes all the way oh it goes down okay yeah we were up there. Now we're going to the lower deck. Let's see what they have here. So yeah, you can get a closer look here at the crater. And then they have some binoculars or telescopes here. House size rock, let's see. Oh, okay. So you see like, where it says house size rock. There's like a rock in the distance that it points to. Do you see it? Mm hmm Is this fun or what? This one's a little bit hard to see. Yeah, but I do see it. These are the children of Daniel Morrow Beringer, the first to identify the origin of the Beringer Meteorite Crater. They opened the crater to the public in the early 1930s through the Beringer Crater Company. We also have a gift shop here. Stones. Candy's looking at some gemstones. <laughs> That's reminding me of my class. Remember I told you? Yeah. It was all. It was Her actually all these type class. of. <laughs> but they were all like tiny versions. So I had that in my rock kit. I had this. I had this too. Candy's famous and rock that, kit from this school. Like, this was in the rock kit. This was too. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh, I had all these in my rock kit. We just got done with uh, touring, exploring, yeah. Yeah, exploring the Behringer Museum, Meteor Crate Museum. <laughs> Meteor, it's such a tongue twister, Meteor Crater. Meteor Crater. Meteor site museum. and museum and... <laughs> and the site, yeah. And the site, yeah, <laughs> all of it. Um, well, we found out it used to be just the Meteor Crater site. There was no museum or anything like that, and it was just that. So, and it used to be free, yeah. um, which we didn't know that. Yeah, we actually learned a lot from Paul, who was the attendant at that 4D theater. Um, and while we were waiting in line, he gave us some history behind that uh, museum. Yeah, because I... Yeah, I was looking at the pamphlet and it said, new 4D mo uh, theater. And I'm like, oh, so how new is it? And he's like, eight years ago. And I'm like, oh, OK. That's not that new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But eight years ago is not that long ago when you think about when they, you know, built the site for yeah. the public. Um, I think it was like, what, in the 1930s or something like that when they made it available to, for the public to see. Mm -hmm. um, and actually the story was interesting too and kind of sad that the guy that discovered it, Behringer, who the museum and site is named after, he discovered it in like 1903 and um, he tried to, for 26 years, he tried to convince the public that something from the outer space created that yeah. big hole. All, yeah, none of the scientists, like, he was trying to convince scientists and no one believed him. And nobody believed him. Yeah, they didn't he, believe it. 26 years of his life, he tried to convince people and nobody believed him. But now they dedicated that site to him because he's the one who said, no guys, this is from the space. I'm like, I swear, it really is. But we're just talking about it. Like how would somebody from the early 1900s know something like that? That's pretty incredible. So there's like uh, little things you could do in there. There's that 40 theater. There's actually a tour you can do too. There's a tour guide that takes you out. Uh, but they only do it at certain times. We kind of missed the one at, I think it was like around two o'clock because yeah. we wanted to do the theater too. But it's an hour and a half. Yeah, hour and a half is a long time for a tour. It is. And it's a lot of walking. So in the winter time, they extend it to an hour and a half uh, because it's less heat. But in the summertime, they reduce the time of the tour to like an hour or something like that, or maybe even less. So yeah, it's there if you want to do a tour. Um, but they do have a discovery center where they have an exhibit of 
you know, giving you information about the meteor, um, about space in general, and about, you know, the history of Behringer. All in all, I think it was like a really good experience. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. I actually didn't think I would spend that long there. I was imagining I would spend like an hour, but we actually spent a little over two hours there. And of course, the meteor crater itself, the impacted site, was amazing in itself. I mean, that's ultimately what, you know, you're there to see is that site. When you see it in person, you're just like, wow. <laughs> And in my mind, I'm just like, this is so unreal that something from space created this huge hole. So I would say if you go make a visit here, um, plan about two hours spending time there. Uh, especially if you do the theater uh, ride, um, I would say it'll be about two hours. But if you don't do it, probably an hour and a half. Um, and if you do the tour, it'll probably be two and a half hours. Actually, that's what Paul said. It would probably be two and a half hours total visiting time if you do the tour. I think the tour would be good. We just didn't have the time to do it. Time. So, Crystal, were you positively impacted? Oh, right. <laughs> I was positively impacted by this place. It was a great time. It was. <laughs> we sound so fake there. <laughs> well, they kept on using these puns, like, yeah, they're you know. Yeah, so funny. And then as we're leaving, uh, they have a sign that said, were you positively impacted? Rate us on Facebook, Instagram, or, yeah. you know, all their social channels. But yeah, it was cute. The puns were cute. It was, it was really cute. So, I'm definitely going to give a positive impact on their social media site. Well, we hope this review helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more of our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.